and my friend Sagar Thapa under the guidance of psychiatric department. To begin with, corticosteroid is a drug of choice for a number of conditions and it has been used extensively in spite of numerous potential side effects and one of such is neuropsychiatric symptoms which occur in about 25% of the patients consuming corticosteroid. Case report. Mrs. Ut, 39-year-old female, resident of Sindhu Palchok, Hindu by religion, an illiterate homemaker, and a known case of systemic lupus erythematosus, was admitted in orthopedic ward with the complaint of pain and swelling in the bilateral knee, elbow joint, and swelling of the face for two weeks. On the third day of admission, she was noted to be restless, had reduced need for sleep, and was talkative. She was frequently insisting to take her home and therefore was discharged upon request. However, she immediately presented the day after at the emergency ward since she was talking non-stop. She was claiming to be princess and asking the family members to distribute food to all. She was also demanding gold and necklace. She appeared cheerful. She was singing and dancing, but at times got violent and had to be restrained. Mental state examination exhibited increased psychomotor activity, elated moods, pressured speech and delusion of grandeur city. On past medical history, she had been on low-dose prednisolone, 5 mg once daily for last 15 years. Due to her unmanageable symptoms, her dose was increased to 10 mg per day. However, despite taking the advised dose, her symptoms were not controlled and she started increasing her dose irregularly on her own for about a week before uh, getting admitted and she revealed taking around eight tablets of prednisolone on her own for the last three days. She has no past history or family history of psychiatric illness. She was immediately shifted to psychiatric ward, started on injectable haloperidol, 5 mg and phenargon 12.5 mg, along with the tapering of prednisolone. And the next day, she was chained to tablet olanzapine, 10 mg, and tablet clonazepam, 0.5 mg. On investigation, her hemoglobin was 8 mg per deciliter. She was ANA positive, and all other significant investigations done were found to be within the normal range. So, on the basis of our history and examination, our differential diagnosis include corticosteroid induced mania, SLE induced mania, bipolar disorder, and delirium. Since corticosteroid and SLE both poses the potential to induce neuropsychiatric symptoms, it becomes essential to differentiate the cause among the two. Since our patients' maniac episodes appeared after a week of increased dose of prednisolone and gradually resolved with tapering of prednisolone, corticosteroid was the triggering factor in our case. With no past history of depression, it rules our differential of bipolar disorder. And since our patient had a consistently elevated mood without any loss of con clouding of consciousness, disorientation, and loss of memory, and inconclusive finding in the CT hair, delirium seems to be a less likely cause. So our final diagnosis is mania induced by corticosteroid overdose. Prenicillin was tapered and she returned to her premorbid self in a few days' time. Tablet olanzapine was tapered to 5 mg the next week and then stopped. And during discharge, we counseled her about her condition and the medication and its adverse effects. To collect some old files, we also went to her village and uh, realized how difficult it was and far it was for her to travel all the way to the hospital and manage to her home back the same day. There also, we told her about her condition and the threat it poses if she repeats the negligence in the future. On discussion, the neuropsychiatric presentation induced by corticosteroid has been well established and it is dose dependent. According to Boston Collaborative Drug Surveillance Project 8, the incidence of psychiatric events is 1.3% in patients taking uh, less than 40 mg of corticosteroid. If the dose is 41 to 80 mg, the risk increases to 4.6% and if the dose is more than 80 mg, the risk increases to 18.4%. Corticosteroid has some typical features uh, as it induces mania. The mania usually uh, uh, is triggered within the two weeks of initiating therapy and usually associated with increased dose of prednisolone and resolved typically in less than three weeks along, uh, as the treatment is done, that is tapering of prednisolone and 
fix if needed. Such cases are found in both developed and developing nations. However, the etiology is slightly different. The predisposing factors in developing countries like Nepal are very few studies in such area. Patient educational status is low. The health awareness is poor. Over-the-counter accessibility of drugs like corticosteroid and the distance factor. Corticosteroid therapy calls for a systematic method of administration. Therefore, adequate patient education is vital to avoid any unwanted side effects. One of the research, patient discharge from acute general medical wards, counseling reduced compliance failure for both patient non-compliance and error by approximately 40%. Uh, we have included uh, counseling in our treatment modality. However, it's also true that in busy hospital setups, it often tends to slip out. So preparing and training medical students or supportive health staff to deliver an efficient counseling will avoid any medical mishaps on account of adequate coun inadequate counseling. So to conclude, the need of proper counseling for a provision of holistic health care of patients is undisplaceable despite the challenges that any health care setups have to go through. Thus, creating proper counseling protocols and participation of medical students in complementing patient education can boost patient compliance. Thank you. Why it is not SLE psychosis? The patient is a known case of SLE for long, has been on steroids, 5MG, whatever, but long duration steroids. And your differential diagnosis mentions SLE psychosis. So why is it not SLE psychosis? Uh, because uh, there are no um, certain symptoms like uh, hallucinations. Mm -hmm. Hallucinations. Okay. And Actually, the foundation of our uh, diagnosis is based upon the way the disease has been progressed and upon the empirical treatment of uh, tapering the corticosteroid doses. Uh, had the uh, symptoms not been relieved on tapering the corticosteroid doses, uh, we would have been confirmed that it was induced by SLE. And instead, when tapering the corticosteroid doses, the, sim the patient got relieved from our uh, uh, manic symptom. Therefore, we are just convinced that it was induced by corticosteroid overdose. The patient is on long-term steroids, but in the examination, there is no mention of the Cushingoid features, whether the patient has got Cushingoid features or not. If the patient has got any thyroid related issues because long term steroid therapy as well as thyroid in a case of SLE they are common and they can also lead to some sort of uh, psychological symptoms. Why is it not that? Yeah, actually the, it was one of the concerns that we took this case because uh, in, uh, in countries like Nepal when the, where the accessibility of health, health is very uh, poor and uh, usually the first encounter the patient make to, uh, are first to the local healers then to the, then to the available uh, health post which is which is also at a distance from the hospital. And in our case, first of all, uh, what our patient did is, uh, s instead of going to the major hospital center because of our different barriers, she first encountered a uh, paramedic who just uh, gave her a random suggestion to, to, just, to just shift over to the corticosteroid. Therefore, after that, she started uh, uh, upon herself and accessing the cort corticosteroid over the counter. She started the long-term dose of uh, minimal, minimal dose of corticosteroid. And uh, I mean, what I'm saying is the patient has got inaccessible to healthcare. That's okay. That's what you're saying. But the patient was there right in front of you in the ward. In the mention of any cushing cord features, especially in the background of long-term uh, corticosteroid usage in the particular patient, to be uh, uh, mentioned in the physical examination should have been done that. Yes, sir. And regarding the thyroid is also here. And then what do you plan to do regarding the treatment of SLE here? The patient came with polyarthritis. Patient already took 80 mg of steroids, and what do you think that uh, you're going to do about it? Uh, our patient uh, is cu currently under the um, analgesic medication for her pain, and along with it, uh, corticosteroid is in inevitably uh, required in case of SLE. Therefore, uh, see, uh, the corticosteroid hasn't been stopped, stopped at this case. However, uh, in terms of exacerbation, uh, we'd have to think about increasing the doses of corticosteroid for her management. Okay. Then, uh, what about immunosuppressant agents? Excuse me, sir. Immunosuppressants? Uh, actually, no, the immunosuppressant hasn't been uh, used yet. What about uh, the patient you put on olanzapine? And in this particular setting of SLE, usage of olanzapine, suppose a patient continues to have neuropsychiatric manifestations and you uh, prefer to continue on olanzapine, what are the likely side effects a patient like to uh, have in this particular case? What are the likely side effects due to olanzapine continued usage? Uh, we are aware about that and so uh, 
uh, our teachers initially we uh, preferred olanzapine and uh, tapered it within a period of a week and had the symptoms been uh, exacerbated or she had been in a problem she was advised to immediately contact uh, our doctor over the phone uh, as per her uh, distance fact uh, limitations what is the mechanism of uh, mania induced by steroids why it occurs is there any explanation or something excuse me sir pardon mania why how it induces mania steroids is there any what is the mechanism any mechanism is there because ct scan is normal you said is there any mechanism or something which is attributed to steroids why it produces mania uh, the me basic mechanism uh, in inducing uh, mania is itself the increase in serotonin and dopamine level here the uh, corticosteroid has a very uh, influential role in increasing the level of serotonin levels and the dopamine level and norepinephrine level which has a very inclusive role in uh, inducing mania are there any special features of mania induced by steroids <coughs> and mania induced by sle is there any differentiating point any special feature is there uh, yes sir actually uh, it depends upon the time of onset the time of onset sle uh, usually um, it in sle if it was induced by sle it occurs within um, um, a year of uh, diagnosis or a year of uh, um, development of sle however in corticosteroid it appears after uh, two weeks of initiating the therapy or maybe increasing dose in sle there is no association with increased dose or uh, present of corticosteroid and uh, sle in sle if the mania was to happen then it can also occur in decreased dose of uh, steroids and also the re uh, resolution of the symptoms the resolution of the symptoms would take a longer time in sle and your investigations did not mention about electrolytes did they mention did you mention electrolytes in that particular patient yeah the electrolyte level electrolyte levels were normal sir so were normal uh, normal sir why did you mention them uh, uh, it was mentioned no? yeah it was mentioned but uh, because we mentioned them because uh, the imbalance in the level of electrolytes especially the potassium can also have some role in inducing such uh, neuropsychiatric symptoms okay